figureheads, Jeff and JJ. We're here at Chuck Show 2017, and uh, we're gonna do something every day, uh, or at least uh, I hope we're gonna do it every day, where we give you a bit of a recap on what we saw that day at SHOT Show. So today, we started off the day at the SHOT Show Industry Days at the Range. Um, why it's plural days, I don't know. We were only there one day. But we were at the range, eventually. Um, <laughs> you, you gotta see the picture. We'll put the picture up here so you can see what happened to our bus on the way there. Um, it, 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 it was hard to sit back and watch this guy try to do a three-point turn in a tour bus on a dirt road with big ruts on each side, knowing he was gonna get it stuck, and boy, did he get it stuck. And then we had to walk the rest of the way. I, I think you have to add, it was a single lane. Yes, yeah, single road. lane dirt road. It wasn't road. even a double lane Like a construction road, road. Yes. not even a real dirt road. And it was marked closed, but he drove yes. down it anyway, yes. which meant we had to hike the last mile or so from where the bus got stuck to get into the range day and start shooting. But once we got there, we yes. saw some cool things. So what what's the first thing you want to talk about that we saw? Well, a couple of the things that we saw, but the one that where I started my day was the DP-12, which is the double barrel shotgun. Um, and uh, you load the two magazines underneath and each magazine feeds each different barrel. Uh, you, it's a pump shotgun, you pump it once and then you have two trigger pulls to release the, the shot from each one of the barrels. You pump again and then the two uh, shots get loaded again. So that's one of the ones that we saw at the NRA uh, convention on the last year. And we thought that it was pretty interesting and we wanted to get our hands on. So we finally, this time we had the chance. So, and by pretty interesting, you mean? I don't know how useful. Pretty it would be. stupid. Yeah. Um, but so it, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I think, to me, I I have struggled to define a tactical situation where the mode of operation you just described would actually be beneficial. I think it would screw me up because I don't know that I have the mental capacity in a high stress situation to remember how many times. You know, pull with, the trigger, with a pump shotgun, and how much you pump. every time you pull the trigger, you pump. I mentally am most of the time capable of remembering that. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. It, it just, yeah. I think it looks interesting, but I don't necessarily like yeah, it. Yeah, I think it's a, a little bit of an approach of trying to in, improve on the KSG or the Utah's shotgun where you have two um, magazine tubes and then it loads into one single barrel. Uh, at the same time, you yes, gotta just pull the, do your pump and single shot each time out of uh, the two magazines out of the, out of the one barrel. Okay, but, so moving on. I interrupted you. Were you no, on? you're good. Go okay, ahead. so next we'll talk about, there we go, some uh, Tika rifles, the Tika T3X Tac A1 and the Tika T3X Arctic. Okay, those are rifles that TJ and I shot. So I shot the, uh, the, the TAC version, the T3X TAC A1 rifle, and <laughs> I, I won it. I, I really had trouble getting up and walking away and not having it go with me because, um, what were we at? I think we're at like 550, 580. I can't remember exactly what it, how many yards it was. Um, almost the furthest I've ever attempted to shoot. And uh, the gong, it was a sizable gong, maybe two foot wide, but I hit it every time. I mean, I only took four shots, I think, but uh, I'm not really, I'm not a distance shooter. I, I want to learn, and I think these are cool rifles and something I want to review more of. Uh, but everything about it felt good to me. I mean, none of the ergonomics felt awkward like they do with some rifles. Um, that was pretty good. Um, TJ will talk about the T3X Arctic at some point, maybe. Yeah. Um, I think that one of the things that you guys mentioned was that the one of the versions that they shot uh, was more the military version. The so Arctic. it's not, it's yeah. not going to be necessarily available for civilian use. But it's something that we got our hands on today and, and yeah. had a good experience with it. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like Finnish rifles and you know, have a lot of old uh, World War II era Finnish barreled rifles, but it was neat to shoot some modern ones. So 
TJ, do you have any TJ. comments on well, the, 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 the T3X? The T3X was fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, you heard it there from TJ. Fantastic. Uh, okay, moving on. Savage MSR-10, and I believe it was the long range that I shot in 6.5 Creedmoor. And I'll, we'll put a picture up because I can't find so, it. Go ahead. Here. Um, really nice. Uh, I'm a big fan of the 6.5 Creedmoor. Here, come on in. Um, big fan of the 6.5 Creedmoor, and it worked really well in the Savage, and that is the that is the furthest I've shot with that rifle. Uh, I'm thinking the guy said it was 800 yards. Um, it was a long way, and I was getting hit. I don't think I got a hit every time, but I got hit, hit several times. It was kind of windy, too, so the, the aerodynamics of that 6.5 Creedmoor round, I think, really helped. But clearly, you know, that uh, Savage is built well enough that it did its part. All right, so moving on. What What's the first thing you did where I made you strip down to far less <laughs> coverage oh, oh, you yeah. when it was cold and windy? Yeah, sure, with the, uh, we used the uh, Swagger Bipod. Swagger Bipod. Yeah, it was, a, it, was, it was a nice little bipod. It had uh, bungee cords instead of all the... the Rigid attachments and everything. And the springs and stuff that they use. Yep. Yeah, it was, uh, you pulled it out, clicked it in. You could swivel. I went from one target left, went all the way around like four targets. Oh. I was shooting other people's targets. <laughs> and it was, yeah. I mean, it was that easy. You know, there was no, there was no bumping, no jumping or anything. And they were fond of you doing that too. They were. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, they thought, thought they were getting hit. Yeah, they thought that they were getting hit. Yeah. All right. People out. We, we got it. We're going to keep it moving because I think our, t our video can only be 10 minutes and it'll stop. Uh, Raven Crossbow, we put a picture up of TJ shooting that. Um, that was neat. It really was. And uh, one of the neat things about it was uh, not just that it looked cool, but functionally it was, there was a little bit of complexity, but it was something you could handle, anyone could handle. You didn't have to be, you know, Lou Ferrigno to grab a hold of the cable and, and cock it. It had a crank that I think he said was up to 10 pounds of pressure. So all, all it required to just very, very casually crank it in and lock it in place. And it fires just like a rifle with a very light trigger. Um, yeah, and we were shooting, what was it, 100 yards? And we were hitting you know, within a, an inch or two. Yeah. Um, close. Yeah. yeah, I think that the manufacturer on that one has uh, supposed to like a guarantee just as long as you're a good shot uh, of at least three inches at 100 yards. That's pretty good you know, for yeah. a cross, crossbow yeah. bolt. Yeah. Okay, so after the industry day at the range or days at the range or whatever they called it, uh, the official shot, you know, lots of vendors range day, we went to the six hour range day. And I got to tell you, Sig, you did a fantastic job. Um, if the if the shot show range event was organized half as well as the Sig one, we would have had a lot better time. It got more done in the morning, even though it was a good event. It was just a little bit of a zoo with all the different manufacturers. Having only one brand at the Sig event made them able to control things a lot better. Um, yeah, but they were running an incredible lot of base and everything. And they they really did a great job with the yeah. organization and yeah. moved people along. Everybody got a really good chance of going through the different firearms and items that they had. Yeah, so um, keep your eye out. We'll put a video up pretty soon of an interview that I did with uh, Kyle Lamb of Viking Tactics. He did some collaborative work with SIG on a P320 pistol and on an M400 rifle. And um, so we basically got a, a guided tour from, from the man himself, from Kyle, on the uh, VTAC M400 rifle from Six Hour, and I put some rounds through it, and you know it felt pretty good. It really did. I I liked it. So um, he made me leave it. Um, so I'm still not happy about that, Kyle, but you know I, I'll get over it, and maybe at some point I'll get one to uh, to work out a little bit more. Shot some air guns. Uh, what one of the contributors here, Bump. We call him Bump. Uh, Bump uh, got to shoot some air guns a bit. You guys did. Uh, what did you guys shoot? We did the uh, 22x uh, silencer that um, 
uh, Sig Sauer has come up with is a fully titanium. Uh, it has baffles in it. It's not a monocore, but it performed very well on the uh, pistol that we shoot it with. Very, very yeah. quiet. very light so it doesn't make your 22 um, gun extra heavy and uh, he performed very very well I was really impressed so hopefully we'll get that one later on for the 22 project so All right oh you know what and I don't have a picture to show you I don't think but something's gonna be re released pretty soon is a 300 blackout subsonic round that will expand uh, they say it expands very well. It's a tipped uh, hollow point, uh, tip for dynamics, mm -hmm. and, and to help really cram that uh, initial Mush expansion mushroom, stage mushroom to bullet. get started so it'll really take off. And they're saying this is going to be a very viable suppressed 300 blackout hunting round, which, which is something I have been looking for and have really found. Uh, we've got some supersonic from SIG, uh, from their performance ammunition that is, uh, I think they call it the HT. I have to go check. I think it's HT. That's supposed to be really good for like 125 grain, I think, which is going to be supersonic. But these are subs and, and subsonic rounds for suppressed shooting. Uh, it's kind of gold standard if you really, really want to be quiet. And uh, I, I'm excited about those. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see the ballistics, uh, how they perform, because everybody, you know, tr trying to shoot sub uh, subsonic with the 300 blackout, you have an incredible lot of dip, you know, going past 100 yards and stuff. So yeah. um, it's something that we're going to be looking forward to. Yeah, that's going to be neat. So uh, let's see, we looked at the uh, P320X series. Yes. We looked at the um, the Kilo 2400 ABS, which is, uh, you know, when, when SIG said, We'd like you to look at this rangefinder. I thought, <laughs> rangefinder? This is boring. You know, who wants to hear about a rangefinder? And so we get down there and um, the head of the optics division comes out and he starts talking about it. And, I, and I'm like, oh, great. I got to listen to this guy tell me about a rangefinder. And he pulls out his smartphone and there's an app on it and it's, and it's connected by a Bluetooth and it has a bunch of environmental sensors built into the rangefinder itself. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh my goodness. I almost was like, no, I don't want to hear about a rangefinder. And this thing is awesome. Yeah, yeah. It really is. And um, all right, what do they call it? Advanced Ballistic Systems or something like that? Yes. Is the company that does the ballistic software that is integrated into this so that it will deliver a customized ballistic solution for you based on your environmental conditions, you know, a very accurate, you know, laser. Uh, distance that it measures, as well as I think it had barometric pressure and compass heading and temperature, temperature, the, the wind thing. humidity, humidity. It had, oh, yeah, he meter. said it had, and we didn't see the wind meter, but apparently it plugs into the microphone jack on a smartphone. Um, so, a lot of cool stuff. And uh, you yeah, know, we could have looked at that a little bit more, but uh, it was a little windy and uh, the lighting wasn't real good. So we're going to look at that. Uh, check back later this week. We're going to have some videos from the SIG booth where these things were kind of giving you a little tease look at. Now we're going to go into more detail in their booth. So um, I think that covers the big things. There were some other things that we may talk about. We want to give away all of our secrets. Well, what about the day before? Because a couple of us did get to have a chance to go to the beef of um, range day. And uh, there was a rifle that we tested out. It's uh, Australia, Austrian made and uh, it's the Ritter's, Ritter and Stark and guys this is a chassis platform for long range shooting that um, it really performed great it was so nice to shoot it um, uh, the whole barrel uh, has the uh, rail for the scope attached to it so you're not going to lose your your zero and this is a modular system that you can actually replace the barrel and put a new caliber to it uh, the magazine well drops off by unscrewing it and you can change from uh, 308 to uh, <clears throat> 243 or, or different uh, calibers on it so uh, and it's kind of sexy like yeah, it looks great it look yes right. and, it, and it's got right. a really really short 60 degree so, lift on the so why don't you do this uh, 
we saw where their booth is going to be at SHOT Show, so why don't you go check them out and see if you can get some more information that we can share. Uh, maybe we can get one of these rifles headed our direction and look at it more deeply. Yeah, and, um, and we do have video of it being taken apart okay. and being put together, so so we'll be able to share right, that. Maybe we can put that together later. Um, in case anyone's wondering, have you thought, what are these guys doing? Are they sitting in a crappy hotel room? Yes, yes we are. Yes, yes we are. <laughs> yes, yes, we absolutely we are. are. We are at an undisclosed two-star hotel on the seedy side of Las Vegas because, frankly, you know that's where we fit in, and um, it was in the budget almost. Yeah. So, uh, so that's what we're doing. We want to get these videos to you right away, and uh, also give you a little peek behind the curtain and see. You know, we're getting access to a lot of really cool stuff and advanced information. There's something we were told about today that we can't talk about for a couple months. Um, yes. So it's glamorous. It really is. Or so you would think, but now you get to peek behind the yeah. curtain to see. see where we're, at. we're staying at a shitty hotel because that's what we have to do. And we're going to be up half the night or more probably um, editing video yeah, and getting video. this stuff out for you. I'm planning the day tomorrow because we have a very full day with lots of videos to shoot and brands to talk to. So leave us a note in the comments for what brands you'd like to hear more about. And TJ will personally go to that brand and request whatever will, information you want. He will. Whatever you want. Whatever. <laughs> Good. It's all about you. Yeah. Um, that's me biting my tongue. I, I usually have a smart ass comment that would be inappropriate, and my kids may watch this, so yeah. I apologize for the adult language. Um, my wife is a very good parent. I'm not. What can I say? Um, but anyhow, check back. We're going to be here all week and um, doing more another range event. We'll go to Thursday night. We're going to shoot a bunch of stuff. We've got lots of appointments to talk to brands with some really neat things. So like us on Facebook, subscribe, and give us a little thumbs up thing on the YouTube. You know, go do that. Leave us a comment. Tell us uh, that we're stupid for staying in a two-star hotel, or that you wish you could be here, or we wish you could be here. E so. Even in a one-star hotel, you would yeah. still prefer to be here sometimes. Yeah. It's next door. All right, so <laughs> stay with us. We'll see you at the range.